Hello, everyone. I have Matthew Rosenquist. He's the CISO and cybersecurity strategist from Eclipse, and he is my guest on my episode on Voice America and security for all. Hey, Matthew, how are you doing today? Doing fantastic. Nice to see you again. And how's everything going in your world? Good. Busy as always. You know, not much sleep, lots of work to get done. Well, there's a lot of work that um, has to be get, has to be done. So we're going to today, why don't you tell our listeners that what we're going to be talking about on our show? Very, ah, very... We're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics. We're going to be talking about nation state attackers and kind of what impact they have on everybody. It's not just on other nations. It's not just on big companies, but it actually changes the entire cybersecurity industry in fundamental ways. And then we're going to talk about what's your second favorite topic to talk about, supply chain. Yes, this is definitely, and, and they're tied together because we're seeing nation states take advantage of weaknesses in uh, digital supply chains. So we're going to touch base a little bit on the different uh, challenges and best practices in supply chain security and some of the headaches as we kind of move forward forward or stumble forward and figure out what a good path is for everyone. Well, I think most of my followers on LinkedIn probably know what nation state is, but just in case, can you kind of break that down a little bit? Certainly. So when we look at the entire community of cyber attackers, you can kind of break them down into different archetypes, right, or different groups, cyber criminals or uh, insiders or data miners, you know, and at the top of this group, at the pinnacle, we identify nation states. And nation states are essentially governments that have either formed internal or potentially external capabilities for offensive cyber operations. And just about every country out there, by the way, has some level. And in many cases, they're pointing it to adversaries uh, out in the world at other countries. And in other cases, they're actually pointing it inwards towards their own population to understand or, or manipulate them. Um, so it's an interesting topic because these countries, if you can imagine, can spend millions or billions of dollars of investment to build a sustaining capability for cyber operations for many different purposes. And that's a lot of resources. Imagine what you could do if you have billion dollars, you know, to spend to attack other people online. They are the heavyweights. Well, the one thing that I'm going to really pick your brain on is some of these nation state bad actors and that they actually, you know, get paid for what they're doing. And I'm interested to hear what you have to say about that. But in a nutshell, what would you say? How would you clarify what these nation state bad actors, who are these guys? Well, again, every big country that, that has any types of intelligence or military probably now has a cyber offensive capability. Uh, you know, we've been tracking them for years and we knew that there were, you know, even what, 10 years ago, we knew 50 or 60 of the top countries had it. But, you know, you can build an internal organization, which is great for the, the countries that can afford it, right? And you're talking about hiring talent and giving them a career and, you know, benefits and bonuses and they're coming coming into offices and working every day for you and getting better. Or we also see other nation states who just take money and go off and hire, um, you know, vendors, basically, uh, you know, for hire workers that are expert, experts in hacking, um, cyber criminals, things of that sort, and they're cyber mercenaries for hire. And they give them money and an objective and go do X, Y, and Z. And they go off and, and conduct attacks being sponsored by a nation. Well, today we are going to talk about nation state and the cybersecurity landscape of the future of cybersecurity. So I'm super excited to have you on the show. For those of you that are watching this on LinkedIn, you can just look um, above this post and you'll see a link to listen to today's show if you did not join live. So I will see you, Matthew, over on the other side at Voice America. Thanks for being my guest today. And I look forward to our conversation. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a great discussion.